I wanted to, I wanted to uh, talk about discernment tonight. I really wanted to talk about capacity, right? Like uh, knowing a person's capacity, but you got to have discernment to do that, right? So I wanted to speak on, um, well, I want to go back, right? Because me and my mans was talking, we was talking about, you know, you got to understand somebody's capacity and you got to learn somebody's capacity. And I was talking about how I didn't actually know what capacity was, right? And that's basically like knowing someone's level, right? What they can handle and what they can't handle without them communicating what they can handle and what they can't handle. You get what I'm saying? And also having the willingness to ask those questions to figure it out, right? So I want to tell y'all things that we do that I've done. Here's an example, right? So in the past, you know, you get into a relationship and all of that. And me, I'm a communicator, right? I like to communicate. But I would get into relationships with women who didn't like to communicate. But I also probably would communicate wrong, right? Uh, but I would also communicate wrong because the person didn't want to communicate. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like I would get upset, right? Like, like why? Like how is this so hard for you? You know what I mean? And um, you know, being in relationships with that person would even you know act like they don't care or they try to say something about you or they do just do certain things, right? You're trying to communicate. They don't understand. They can't hear nothing you're saying. They, you know what I mean? They, they saying the wrong. They thinking something else and all of this other stuff, right? That that you're not saying to them or thinking that, you know, they feeling away and all this other stuff. And, you know, in the past, you get upset about it, right? Um, example, you get into a relationship with somebody and you're trying to communicate to them, like, what's wrong with you or what's bothering you about them, right? Um uh, uh, yeah, I guess that they'll be in denial, but it's like they don't really know, right? You know what I mean? So they're unconscious. So that person could either be mad or here's another example, an example of like a woman, somebody saying somebody's clingy, right? A man saying that a woman's clingy or whatever. And that doesn't actually mean that she's clingy, right? Um, her saying that you staying out too, uh, too late at night and all of that, that doesn't actually mean something's wrong with her. Him saying, like, your clothes is too provocative or whatever, or I don't know. I, I can't think of good examples right now. Other examples. Um, the only thing I can think of is you just communicating to that person of what's bothering you or something that you may need, a boundary or something, and that person may deflect or that person may get offended or defensive, right? If that makes sense, y'all get me? Like that person to get defensive, like they don't understand or, you know, they'll be like, why is that? I just did this. And all you, was, you know, all you doing is asking them like, hey, like, hey, like, you know, this thing right here, like I would much rather you do this because this thing right here affects me. You know what I'm saying? This is just an example. Like this right here, this affects me. And this person is trying to tell you what affects them. But the person on the other end is like, what are you talking about? I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't my intention. I, I didn't mean to do that. All they could think about is, I didn't mean to do it, right? Or they keep getting offended or defensive. They can't understand what you're saying. And, you know, in relationships, we'll get mad about it, right? We'll get mad and we'll keep trying to explain to that person, right? And... You know, and, and try to change that person, right? You know, a lot of women, y'all try to change a man or try to get him to do something. Example, right? Like a man going to church and you don't want to go to church and all that. And you want him to come to church and all that. But he's getting offended or like, I'm just like this or whatever, whatever. And why you acting like something wrong with you and you clingy and you control it and you, you this and you that. You know what I mean? But what I learned was in the past when that would happen with me. Right. When the person wouldn't understand me, when they would be like, oh, something's wrong with you. All I all I said was what you doing. You get what I'm saying? All I said was like, yo, 
Like, yo, I like, you know, when you do that, like, I'm not feeling it. Right? That's all I say. And now that person, what are you talking about? So wrong, you controlling, you possessive. And y'all know me. If it's a woman and you want to be my girl or whatever, and you got your body out, I'm going to say something. But the thing is, I learned that people, a lot of people do not understand this on their end. Literally, I could tell somebody, my mother ignored me growing up. Like, I'm telling them my trauma, right? And asking for them to... to to uh, understand my trauma and I would much, you know, I, I'm requesting something like, yo, you know, when you do this thing that kind of reminds me of that. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm going to get more into detail. I'm just trying to give you all examples so that y'all can understand. But I'm telling a person my trauma, like, this is the reason why I feel like this. So I'm communicating it to the person like, yo, you know, back in the past, my mother, boom, boom, boom. You know, when you do this thing right here, that kind of reminds me of that. Like, I know you're not doing that, but I want you to know that's how that makes me feel. So I would much rather if you could do it this way. So, you know what I mean? So that won't trigger me or whatever. But the other person on the other side is like, oh, my God, that's your demons. And you're trying to put your demons on me. And I, I didn't, I'm not doing that. And you're trying to do this. And you see, that's what I learned. Well, excuse me. That's what I used to get upset because the person doesn't understand what I'm saying, they're getting upset. They're not self-aware, right? And I would get upset because I'm like, how don't you understand this? But when on their end, that person would, they'll communicate things to me or they'll do things and I can realize what it is and I'll try to accommodate that. But on the other end, they're fighting me, right? If y'all make, if y'all, if, if this makes sense. So now this is what I learned. I learned, <laughs> From me fighting, getting mad, getting angry, because I used to be mad and I used to be angry because it seemed like that person's selfish, right? It seems like they don't care. They're selfish. Why they got to keep fighting? Boom, boom, boom. But let me tell y'all something. From those situations and from me getting closer to God, y'all, I realized through discernment that when people do certain things and say certain things, now I know their capacity. So what I mean by... I can tell that person's capacity. I'm going to go back into the example, right? So notice I said I was talking to the person. I'm telling them like my trauma, like, yo, this is the problem. I have. You know, not the problem, but this is what makes me feel this way. And when you do this, it makes me feel like you're doing that. I know you might not be doing it, but I want you to know that this is what makes me feel like that. And I really don't want to feel like that because I really, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean that you are not healed. That means that you are whole. Because I'm not proje I'm not saying you did it. I'm telling you I know you don't. But I'm letting you know this is a thing that causes that. Can you please accommodate? Right? Can you please consider and accommodate me? Meaning, I'm asking for you to love me. That's really what I'm saying. Now, I've learned if on the other end, that person cannot hear that at all. Meaning, multiple times. If that person fights you, if that person says something's wrong with you, boom, 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 boom. I've learned that they don't have the capacity to understand what I am saying. You get what I'm saying? They are not spiritual, spiritually aware. They do not. They are not emotionally aware. They do not have the spiritual uh, intelligence. They don't have the emotional intelligence. They don't have self-awareness. How do I know this? Because someone who is self-aware, someone who is spiritually aware, someone who is spiritually mature, emotionally mature, they can hear what you're saying, right? They can hear when I'm like, yo, when this happens, boom, boom, boom. They can hear, oh, okay, when I do this, this affects them. So they're trying to help. They, they're trying to show me what I can do instead that can, you know, help them feel better. Instead. Of being offended. You know what I mean? When you are offended, you are closed minded. You are closed off. This is why Jesus was not offended. And this is why he teaches us not to be. He doesn't say that we won't be. He says like it's inevitable that you'll be offended, right? Like it's going to happen. But he wants you to learn how not to be offended. This is why we are to learn how to love people and pay attention to their needs. This is how I can tell. 
if I can go into a relationship with somebody, right? Or even if I'm in a relationship. So this is where discernment comes in, y'all. Feel what I'm saying? We go into relationships and we argue with people and we want them to change. And they, why are they saying this? And why do they sound like this? And, 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 and you think, and we go into relationships thinking this person goes to church every day. This person reads their Bible every day. This per but, but, but you can't see God. You can only hear them say God. And you can only hear them say that they're doing things that represents a relationship. But you can't see God. See, the difference is that you need to be able to see. You get what I'm saying? I can see now that this person, by the things that they say, by somebody literally rejecting something that I'm trying to communicate, I can now see that person awareness. I can see if they are mature. I can literally see if that person is a wife. Or a husband. I can literally, any of y'all, anybody on this live, guarantee if I was in front of you, I can see, literally see your um, your maturity level. And spiritually, I can see it. Emotionally, I can see it. Self-aware, I can see all of that now. Literally, I can see if you're a baby in Christ. I can see if you're emotionally intelligent. Just by the little things that you say. And how you respond and react. I guarantee I can tell it quick. You know what I'm saying? But in the past, I could not tell it. I couldn't tell none of this at all. Couldn't see it. And this is what I also want to talk about. When you get discernment, this is where you're able to see a person's capacity, where you're able to choose the person and you're also able to have more peace now, right? Example, I know to argue with people less. I definitely know to argue with a woman less because of the discernment of me being able to tell her maturity level. Like I can tell if she can understand spiritually, emotionally, all of these things. So if I'm communicating like what I just said to her and and then she's like, no, what are you talking about? Like I didn't do anything. I automatically know that she can't be in a relationship with me like you can't. Right. Well, I ought to, I'm going to say it like this because it's grace. Right. I automatically know that she may not be able to be in a relationship with me, right? Because that's like feeding a baby. Now, I will try to see if she's open to learning because, like I tell everybody and I tell my man, you got to be willing, right? So just because you don't know or it's hard for you, that person got to be closed-minded for them to literally not be able to have the capacity at all. Just because they don't know something doesn't mean that they're not willing to know and willing to do. So I will like if I don't if I can't see it and I'm also trying to communicate it like, well, what about this? And boom, boom, boom. And they still close minded. You can't be in a relationship with me, baby. Baby girl, you can't be in a like you will hate me. You hate me because I'm over here eating solid food and you drinking baby milk. You feel what I'm saying? I can't expect you to feed me and you a baby. You're a baby emotionally. You're a baby. And this is like not disrespect. I'm just saying like like immaturity. So when I'm saying baby, this is like you immature as in you're not fully grown. Like you're not fully there yet. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your capacity level of understanding what I understand is not there. And you need these things to be in a relationship. And you definitely need these things to be in a godly relationship. You understand what I'm saying? So I want y'all to know like, yo, we need discernment, y'all. When we go into these relationships, I want y'all to see this too in yourselves. The relationships that you've been in and you over here trying to communicate and you always try, you trying to fight something to somebody. You're trying to fight something, you know, with people and try to get them to do something or trying to get them to, to see it this way or trying to, I mean, it almost seems like you're trying to force this thing and you're mad and you're so mad and you're so angry and you're so hurt. A lot of times, all the time, I ain't even gonna say a lot of times, <laughs> all the time. Well, I'm gonna just say a lot of times because this can also happen with, you know what I mean? Like with mature people, I believe when we tend to not understand something, right? Even though we might be on a level, but it's gonna be times where we butt heads. So somebody is gonna be off. Um, but I think it's worse when somebody's closed minded, right? That person doesn't want to move at all. Like they're blind, they're deaf. They can't hear a thing you saying. 
They can't see a thing that you're trying to show them. They're blind and they're deaf. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, y'all, if you look in your past, just look at all those relationships you've been in and you was trying to cause somebody to, to think something or to see something. And I'm going to keep it real. You could have been the person that didn't see. You could have been the person that was over here saying something's wrong with you when they're trying to communicate it to you. You could have been that person that was spiritually immature. You could have been. I was. I was. Because when I was over here getting mad at this person, this is what happens. We tend to get mad. We tend to get upset. We tend to try to force. We tend to try to stay with somebody just hoping that they're going to eventually get it. But that person isn't willing, right? I was spiritually immature because I was getting mad. I was getting angry, y'all. Like, I was hot. Because how don't you understand or how can you not hear nothing I'm saying? Or why don't you ever have conviction? Or why are you so mean to people? Like, And I'm trying to get them to understand, like, yo, this ain't how we act. This ain't how we treat people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to learn to communicate. And I would really get upset and mad because I really wanted us to communicate. I really wanted us to be on the same page. I really wanted us to to work things out. Like, I really love, as y'all probably would say, to fix things, right? Like, if I see an issue, it's like, all right, let me get my tools. Let's go ahead. And I'm talking about communication, right? Like, all right, man, we got a little bit of mess on the floor. Like, all right, let me go get this stuff and let's clean it up together. Let's fix this. You know what I mean? Let's let's work it out. I'm that guy. Let's let's. I want peace. So let's work this out so we can still love each other and have fun and have peace. I'm trying to go to sleep with a clear mind. And I want you to, too. You know what I'm saying? That's how I am. But on the other end, a lot of times, the woman, she wouldn't be. And that would make me extremely hot. Right. Because I was hurt, to be honest. I was sad because it's like, like, how can't you understand what I'm saying? I said black. Why are you saying blue? I did not say that. Why are you thinking I said this and I didn't say it? Right. And why are you not understanding? I didn't know about trauma. I didn't know about, um, you know, past situations. I didn't know about attachments. I didn't know about strongholds. I didn't know about soul ties. I didn't know. I didn't actually think people got jealous. I didn't think people... I didn't think people was petty in relationships. I didn't think people tried to get under your skin. I didn't think people was passive aggressive. I didn't know what passive aggression was, to be honest. I didn't think none of that stuff. I I did not think people was like that. Because I don't like to try to hurt people. I do not try to... You know what I'm saying? So I was not aware of nothing. I was a baby, boy. You know what I'm saying? I was blind to all of that. And I used to get mad and angry when people did that stuff to me because I wasn't like that, right? So that exact that was my capacity of not knowing. But I was also getting mad at their capacity of not understanding <laughs> where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying? And this is what we do, y'all. We are low in capacity. We don't have discernment. And a lot of times God is also using these relationships, y'all. God is using these relationships to get us discernment because after these relationships, guess what? Now I'm able to see and well, after the relationships and through, you know, reading the Bible and studying and just doing all the things that I do with paying attention to people, learning and, and looking at myself, like looking at myself as well. You get a whole lot of discernment when you look at yourself, right? Like, why do I do this? Why do I do that? What caused this? Boom, boom, boom. And because I could see myself, right? Now my eyes are open enough to start seeing other people. This is why the Bible says, first take the log out your own eye, right? First take that log out your eye and you'll be able to clearly see the speck. It's funny. You take the log out and now it's a speck in there, right? And as you can see, like I told you, I would get upset. I would be angry. I would be hurt. And I know y'all, y'all used to be angry. Y'all used to be hurt. This person did this to me. They did that to me. But you you keep saying that they did this to you because you don't know their capacity, y'all. Let me repeat that. You consistently keep saying that person did that thing to you. Because you don't know their capacity. 
they don't have the capacity to understand you. Right. They don't have the knowledge and the wisdom to understand how that affects you. Right. And the same thing with me. God, remember, God doesn't allow people to see what they don't want to see. He opened my eyes when I got closer to him. I got discernment because of him. I didn't have it. You know what I mean? Like, I was mad. I was angry. They acting like this. They acting like that. They did this to me. Right? Even though I did a whole lot to them, um, uh, for them, and, and to them, uh, I was just mostly focused on what they did. Like, they did this to me. They did that. They hurt me. I mean, I probably ain't say hurt. But... <laughs> Boy, I probably said disrespected and all that, right? But um, that's how we look at things. And I want y'all to understand, this is what we do when we consistently think people hurting us, y'all. It's because we're looking at them and we're wanting something back from them, but that person can't actually see what we need. You understand what I'm saying? They don't, they, they can't realize it. So when you're like, hey, you know, I don't think it's cool for you to talk to your ex, when we're in a relationship and they're like, what are you talking about? You're insecure. Something's wrong with you. You don't trust me. Let me tell you all something. As soon as somebody say something like that, that should immediately tell you they are not mature. They are not spiritually mature. They are not emotionally mature. They are not self-aware. Their response should tell you how smart how wise they are. But instead, we don't pay attention to that. We get offended by what they're saying. See, somebody could be like, Rudy, I could tell a girl. Think, let me tell y'all something, right? This is how I tell you I don't play that sucker stuff, right? And I look at these dudes who be acting like simps, and I don't want them to be a simp. I don't want you to be a simp. Because y'all know I ain't that dude, yo. Like, word, like, for real. Like, I don't care. I will dead tell a girl, if you want to be with me, shorty, like, you can't be... I, if I don't know her like that, I ain't saying nothing, right? But if I know her and she and we talking and all that, I love her, I know straight up like, yo, like you, you know, I ain't really with a girl dressing like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be dressing like that. Or to my mother, like I don't care what nobody said. I don't care what you say, how you feel, no matter what. Can't, Jesus can't come down here and change my mind. But Jesus wouldn't change my mind because he think the same thing. He don't want his daughters dressing like that. And that's where I'm able to have the security. So somebody could say, example, if I was to tell a girl like, yo, you ain't dressing like, well, I ain't going to say that. She can do whatever she want, to be honest. But she can't be with me, though. You know what I'm saying? Do what you want, shorty. But you could never be with me, right? But I will let her know, like, if you want to be with me, you got to understand the type of dude I am. And you got to be this type of woman. Not for me, though. Don't do it for me. Appreciate that, Valley. Now, don't do it for me. You got to be that type of woman. You got to be a woman who out here not showing your body like that. Your butt can't be out like that. Your boobies, I don't care. You better put a bra on. Can't be all that nipple showing all of that. That's, you heard? Like, dead serious. You can't. I'm not the sucker, so a girl can't be like, you're controlling. But if she does say that, that tells me, that immediately tells me her capacity and I'm more than sure she's not that spiritually mature. To say that, she's not spiritually mature. You understand? Because someone who is spiritually mature understands my father in heaven doesn't even want me dressing like that. My father in heaven understands this about his sons. And his sons understand the reason why. Right? And it's also protection for her. You understand? So if a girl was to say, you're controlling, you think that's going to affect me? Let me tell you the whole shield I got on. That's like a bow, an a, a, a arrow coming at me in a bow. I'm going to hit my shield. It just fall right off. It's going to hit the shield and fall off. That can't affect me whatsoever. Let me repeat that. That cannot affect me at all. That tells me where she is. That tells me she's probably a baby. She probably dibbling, dabbling over there on the world. You know what I'm saying? She's struggling in some way. She's not mature enough to understand this type of mindset. You understand what I'm saying? I can tell her capacity. So therefore, I can't be with her. Or example, 
If I'm like, yo, you know, you know, yesterday, you know, when this was going on, you know, it kind of made me feel like this, right? And I'm saying it in a, in a respectful way, like, yo, you know, like yesterday when this was happening, you know, this kind of made me feel away, and I just wanted to. And if she was like, if she were to immediately respond and be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Boom, 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 boom. That's you. I know that she is not spiritually aware. I know that she is not spiritually mature. And whoever come on this live talking and acting like that, I want y'all to know that's how you are. You understand? That means that you need to you need to understand some certain things. You need to grow a little bit and understand. And I don't mean that in no disrespect. But if anybody come on this live and you saying some nonsense in this comments, I want you to understand that's where you are as well. You, un you understand? As a fact, man or woman. Because if you could connect anything that I say and you could go back and look at God and see that he's cl he, he, he agrees with that, that tells you the truth. You feel what I'm saying? That tells you the truth. And like I told you, I know y'all probably want me to be a nice guy. I'm not really that nice. You feel me? Loving. Nice though, man. I love y'all, man. But y'all already know what it is, man. I'm I'm like Pete over here. Yo, it's a sword in my hand. You heard? I got the strap on my side. <laughs> you feel me? But I love y'all. You feel what I mean? It's never disrespect. But I, I really want you to understand that. You feel me? You think I'm nice, Kanisha? Kanisha think I'm nice. You think I'm nice, Kanisha? You come on now, Kanisha. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the nice guy though, you feel me? But anyway, I love y'all. I want y'all to know. I want y'all to know I'm still my wife from leaving me because I don't listen to her, I understand her. Struggling with this with this. And my wife is leaving me because I don't listen to her, to, to, to her I understand. Banco, 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 banco. Just date someone who believes in what you believe and not try to convince someone. Yo, anybody come in here, I want y'all to know y'all getting clipped. So, Valerie, and Valerie, Michelle, whoever. Matter of fact, Cheryl, you about to get it too. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you be a mod because you be on here all the time too. Y'all please hold it down in the, uh, in the chat, cause y'all know me. I clip all y'all. Or, <laughs> right? I love y'all, but I don't want to hear that nonsense. Right? You feel me? Hold on, y'all. Hold on, real quick. All right, all right. So. The whole point I'm making, right, regardless, the whole point I'm making is to know somebody's capacity, to have discernment, right? You need to have discernment. And we need to have discernment while dating, while even, uh, yes, while in a relationship, we do too, I'm not going to lie, but we still need to, because we still got to choose that person, right, to marry or whatever. But while dating, obviously, and in a relationship, we need discernment and we need to understand a person's capacity. Now, I'm a, I am going to break this down a different way. <clears throat> um, my daughter's mom. I think I just said this, but I'm going to try to say it a different way. My daughter's mom, right? Um, because I don't think... I don't think it's all about us, right? It should not be all about us. People know I don't like to preach that. It's about me. It's about me. It's not about me, right? We follow Christ, y'all. So we are servants, and that's something else. I don't like that pastors be doing all the time when they be preaching. They always talking about that person made you feel that person did this to you. You don't deserve. Man, shut that nonsense up, yo. That's not what Christ tells us. <laughs> he talks about how we need to give to people, how we need to serve, what we need to do. No, for real. I'm, for real, though, Vera, like a lot of people do that. And I, I, I get tired of walking in churches and hearing pastors talk about like what somebody do to you all the time, like. That's not what you read in the Gospels. That's not in the Bible. God consistently talks about what we should do for others. So, yes, we need to understand a person's capacity, right, in order to choose someone. But we also need to know somebody's capacity, right? This also helps us choose 
We need to know somebody's capacity when communicating to them. You feel what I'm saying? So like I told you earlier, if somebody don't really truly understand me, that also means, right? Because I take that as practice. That also means that we got the opportunity, right? To test, well, not test, but to practice. I'm going to say that. We got the the opportunity to practice being more like Christ, right? Because this is also an opportunity where you can see if that person capacity is open, right? If they're willing. And earlier, you know, I was talking about me being upset, me being angry because that person don't have the capacity. But when you get the discernment to see if somebody has the capacity, now you move different. Right. So now, example, my, my daughter's mom, when we was together, I didn't have the capacity and I didn't know that she ain't had a capacity. Feel what I'm saying? So I used to get mad. She totally different. Right. Like, she, like, she's not like me. Her mind ain't on God all the time. You know what I mean? Like, she's not like me. I'm going to just keep it like that. And when we was together, I was just getting closer to God. Literally, I was just starting to get closer to God. But I was still confused. And. You know, I used to get mad, I used to get upset because my my morals and all this stuff is different than hers. Like, my mind is on conviction. Like, I would be convicted and her mind wasn't always like that. And nobody and nobody who really whose mind isn't really on God is really going to be on that anyway. You know what I mean? But I didn't know that at the time. Plus, I ain't even going to lie. I wasn't even thinking. We just had two different mindsets. So we had two different mindsets. And I used to get upset at her about a lot of things. So that shows... Where my capacity was. That shows my immaturity. But I also didn't know her immaturity. I also didn't know her capacity at the moment. <clears throat> but after we broke up and I started to get even closer to God, y'all, I started to learn her capacity now. So now the things that I used to get upset at, the things that I used to be mad at, the things that I would try to get her to understand or whatever, whatever. I could understand why she didn't understand me now, which caused me to not be upset now like that, which caused me to have more peace, which caused me to try to figure out how to communicate. You feel what I'm saying? Now I'm trying to figure out how to communicate to someone. Now I'm trying to figure out what that person may need rather than just trying to get them to understand me or get upset because... You know what I mean? This is when I started to learn we are actually different. Everybody's different, right? And if if all of us knew this, our relationships would be so much better. Because now my anxiety is coming down. Now my anger is coming down because now my heart is softened. Y'all get what I'm saying? Now my heart is softened because it's like, oh, I understand why she reacts this way. I understand why. So I know if I communicate, she can't handle that. But before, I didn't know that. And even then, I was causing her to react, right? And she was causing me to react. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Both of us, like, sparking a fire. You know what I'm saying? But this is where... But but let me tell y'all this. But if me and my daughter's mom... And y'all know I ain't slighting my daughter's mom. I'm just making an example, right? <clears throat> but if I would have knew these things before, I probably wouldn't have chose to be with her. If she would have knew, she probably would have chose to be with me. You get what I'm saying? But this is why we mess up in relationships, y'all. This is exactly the reason why. Dang, I'm, I'm, I'm actually talk about something else. But this is also why we move so fast in relationships, y'all. Ladies, this is why. I'm going to talk to the fellas, too, because y'all fellas be getting on my nerves, too. I love y'all, man, but y'all be moving in y'all emotions too much, bro. For real. Y'all got to chill, man. (laughs) Y'all brothers need to relax, bro. For real. Ladies, I'm going to talk to y'all, too. This is why you got to be careful. It's why you got to be careful because you're more emotionally driven. And I don't want to hear men got emotions too. Understand what I'm saying. Because that's going to, whoever respond and say something like that, that's going to tell me about your capacity. Because I know that you're not listening. You got to pay attention to what I'm saying, please. Right? Ladies, you're more emotionally driven. 
If a man talks, if a man is kind, if a man is nice, oh my God, he makes me feel good. You think he the one. He goes to church. He reads his Bible. He, he prays. He's a praying man. The devil, the devil could pray too and act like, right? What you think? The devil ain't over here. He was in the garden. He was in God's environment. He looked like he was supposed to be there. Yo, y'all just be, but I want y'all to understand because I love y'all. I want y'all to be aware. I really want to protect y'all for real. This is why I make this stuff. Like, I want to protect y'all brothers too. Everything that I learn, I got to give it to, to everybody, right? So, ladies, this is why you got to be careful. <clears throat> Can't just be moving so fast just because this man makes me feel good. God don't care about that, right? Because you don't know his capacity, right? You think he is the one because he opens doors, he communicates with me. Um, he cares about my children. He cares about, he, he's so understanding. Well, not understanding, but he's this, he's that. And you don't even know him like that. You feel me? Let's take a pause. You don't know him like that. You don't know him like that. Y'all know things take time. Let me repeat this. Because who was talking? Somebody was talking about this yesterday. Somebody said this. I can't remember what it was, who it was. But do y'all know all the fruits of the spirit? Not fruits, excuse me. Fruit. All of the fruit of the spirit take time. Let's dial it back a little bit. Fruit. Let's repeat this. Because I know everybody always so look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. Well, if you want to look at the fruit, let's 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 use wisdom, right? Do fruit need to grow? Do fruit take time? Can you see somebody's fruit as soon as you see them? Let's let's repeat this. Okay? Let's repeat this. We about to have some spiritual teaching, some spiritual awareness. Everybody about to get discernment spiritually, all that. Let me tell you everything that God shows that you should have is spirit, right? And everything that God says that you should have or someone should have, you should have and someone should have in order to see God's spirit, it all takes time to see. Look at the fruit of the spirit. Faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, patience. Love. Oh, but you can see that in a week. You can see that in two days. But God told you what? I remember God saying other things. What's up, Michelle? What's up, Michelle? I remember God telling you these things. Yes, self control, joy, peace, long suffering. Can you see that in one day? Somebody tell me. Because I don't think God would tell us to be patient. I don't think God would. Well, I don't think God would consistently tell me to be patient if I could see something the first day. I don't think God would tell me to stay away from to flee from temptation if I if I should make a choice just like that. I don't think God would tell me to have self-control. If I can make decisions like that or be so impulsive. I don't think God would have put in the Bible, the garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And when they got deceived and when they fell into the fruit, into the lies, if I can make a choice, if it was OK for me to make a choice that quick, I don't think God would have would allow the Israelites to be enslaved that long. If I don't think God would have allowed Abraham to consistently um, uh, follow him into the promised land for that many years. I don't think God would have said, I got this promise for you and several, and they had to wait. Let's repeat this. Wait. Let me repeat all through 66 books in the Bible. Somebody tell me if I'm lying. Everything is wait. Wait. Be patient. Wait. Somebody tell me if I'm lying. This is where I get upset at, right? Because obviously I get upset at myself because I've done this crap too. But then I get I really get upset 
when it's somebody who screams God's name. This is what I get upset at. When people scream God's name, scream it. You screaming at the top of the mountain. Like you in your Bible every day. Like you talk to God 10, 15, 20 times a day. Like you read your Bible, pray and do all these things every single day. Like you think with God on your mind when you make decisions. But you screaming his name like you do all of that. So if so if you screaming his name and you think speaking in tongues. I'm going to say that because people think you so spiritually aware because you speak in tongues. You so Christian like. Go read first Corinthians. What is it? Chapter what? 14. I think it's chapter 14, right? Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Because I, I, I'm a really, yo. This is why I love to study the Bible. Like, I love it. It is like a drug. Like, I don't think y'all understand. Listen, not, listen to how passionate I am. Like, and the reason why I feel like this is because I don't want people to be blind. I don't want people to be like, I love to help and protect people. I love to look for things that's hard for people. Like, I don't know why God gave me this decision or this passion to, like, search for what was hard for people to see. It's like, oh, I got to, if they can't see, I'm going to go figure this out and then I'm going to bring it back to them. Like, I have to. You understand? So, we got to understand, y'all, that we need to wait. We need to be patient. We need to understand what discernment is. We need to understand the fruit. The fruit. You can't just see fruit like that. Because the fruit of the spirit. Let me repeat that. Let's talk about it. The fruit of the spirit. Spirit. Not just fruit. Not just something that's easy to see. Spirit literally means you cannot see it. Right? Right? Anything spirit you can't see. So if you can't see this, what makes you think you just going to see it like that? Come on now. How, Sway? How? That means if it's spirit, you actually have to wait. Let me repeat that. Rudy, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's go back to Adam and Eve. We could go back to Adam and Eve because I will point everybody back to Adam and Eve every single time. Because they the root. That's the root. That's why I'm going to go back. And when you look in the Bible, God consistently went back. He said, you did this because your mother and father. Because your ancestors. Because Adam and Eve. Right? He points everybody back to the root. And when you go to therapy, where they point you back to? Your mommy and your daddy. And who's our spiritual mommy and daddies? Adam and Eve, they was the first. And because they did, that's why we do. Right? So we need to go back to what they did to see why we do. And then we got to look through the lineage. This is why when you read in the Bible, it consistently says, oh, and this was David and David's son and his son, son and his son, 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 <laughs> right? And his father and his son and his uncle. And his mom, and he was married too. This is why he consistently shows that in the beginning of chapters, in books, excuse me, in the beginning of a book or a chapter, this is why they got their names listed. That's a part of the reason of the names being listed. Right? You, you read a first verse and it's all these people's names and you try to skip it. I learned that lesson. I figured out there's a reason behind these names. <laughs> right? So you got to be able to pay attention to these things. So see somebody's fruit, man. You need to have discernment. You are not God. So therefore you have to wait. And when you study psychology, right? Even when you study um, neurolog neurology, right? When you study the mind and when you study the brain, right? Uh, scientists show, researchers say, that it is your emotional side that is triggered first to stimuli. What is stimuli? Something that stimulates your mind, right? 
It could be like a crash or something. It could be like somebody yelling. It could be somebody uh, saying something bad towards you, right? It can be anything. It could be good, bad. The emotional part sparks off first, fires off first. But then it says the logical part comes after. So if it's the emotional part, then what does that mean? Why did Jesus come down here and consistently tell us about the flesh? The emotional trigger and your unemotional, uh, some of these emotions comes from uh, unawareness, right? Which is in your subconscious because you don't know that your brain has been programmed to, to, to react to this because of your past. So you're reacting out of flesh, out of emotion first because you don't know the truth. About why you do this. You don't know the truth. Of why this is happening. You don't know the truth. Of why this affects you like that. You don't know. That the devil keeps using. Your daddy not being there. To cause you to keep getting these bodies. To cause you to want. To wear and to be provocative. You don't know. That the enemy is causing you. To want to go out on Friday night. And have sex with all these girls. Because mommy. Didn't show much love to you. Or mommy didn't show you much. You don't know that. That's the flesh. You don't know that all of these things is causing you to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you're trying to reject that. You're trying to reject what God is trying to tell you because it feels good. Feels good to go go out Friday night, right? Get drunk and have sex and all of that. But then guess what happens after you get drunk and have sex? You wake up feeling empty. You have sex and wish you didn't do it. You wake up in the morning and say, I wish I ain't, I'm not drinking anymore. Mm. And now you over here feeling empty and empty. How do I know, man? Because I have all the girls in my past. And I remember feeling empty. I, I remember being disgusted with myself. You know what I'm saying? And still feeling lonely. Because I'm trying to get this feeling, but I get the feeling and then immediately after I have sex, I feel nasty. And I feel like I, I shouldn't have never did this. And I feel like it's wrong. And now I'm looking at her like she dirty. Especially if she did it the first night I seen her. She looked bad to me. Yes, it's, I feel dirty too. But I'm still looking at her like I, we both dirty. Why do I feel like that? It's like nobody told me this. But now I feel like, where did this come from? But 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 if you go back to Adam and Eve, right after they ate, right after they ate that fruit, what happened? Right after they ate the fruit, what happened? The same thing I did is the same thing they did. Right after. But what if I would wait? What if I would wait? Right? What if I would wait, y'all? What if I would have waited and what if I would wait, right? What if I could wait? What would happen? Would I have this feeling? Would I have discernment? Would I know somebody's capacity, right? What if I waited to choose someone? Let's talk about it because everybody's so emotional and I know people, what do you need to talk? I don't need to talk no to. All I need to do is show y'all respect, bro. Y'all on my lap, right? I love y'all. But I know how people be telling Rudy, you need. Y'all on my lap. I want everybody to always remember me as Rudy going to tell me the truth. And Rudy, care about you. I care about you. I love you. I wouldn't be saying none of this. I wouldn't be upset about this stuff that I did. And upset that it's hurting other people. Right? I wouldn't be upset if I didn't care about it. I wouldn't be on here talking about this if I didn't care about it. I, I ain't got to help nobody. But I actually care. Right? I, I really want to help. So, we can have more discernment, y'all. And we can learn people's capacity, y'all. And we could choose better, y'all. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to be patient. Right? We got to allow God to work on us, y'all. We'll have more discernment. We'll be able to choose someone and understand their capacity for things, right? Because we could get like example. Here's another example. Me getting with a girl 
who example like i was talking about like a girl gotta to get with me you can't be walking around with your body out like that right i don't care what nobody said the world can't cause me to think any different but if i was a weak man i could really fall to what i'm saying somebody could be like rudy you're controlling and i'll be like oh my god oh my god i don't want nobody to feel like that and then she walk around here with her booty out and I'm feeling like I'm the most secure man, but really looking like a... St- <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really looking like... Y'all yeah, don't even know what... A, a sip, <laughs> right? Really looking like a weak man. I'm really looking like a like I'm not a leader. I'm really looking like a, like men can't respect me. A godly man. I'm really looking like God ain't going to be able to honor me. You feel what I'm saying? And then I choose a woman like that. <clears throat> And then later my nature comes out. So yeah, yeah, I'm 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 strong. I'm I'm secure in myself. She can do whatever she wants. She can walk around with her booty out. She can have her nipples out. I mean, it is what it is, right? And then later on, my nature comes out. Later on, I get upset. Later on, I don't like how she acting. I don't like all this crap that's happening around her. You feel me? Because I don't know. The capacity that I have, but I also don't know the capacity that she has on a spiritual level, on a maturity level. You understand? So then I end up choosing a girl that I really can't be with, that I really would never want to marry in my life. But now I'm miserable because there are women out here that won't dress like that. There are women out here that will communicate with me. There are women out here that are willing to communicate and willing to listen. Right? There are women that's like, yeah, I do understand how you feel. Oh, yeah. So, I'm a, matter of fact, I'm thankful for what you told me because this can, this can help us. There are women like that. Right? There are women that's like, no, I ain't wearing that. But I, I used to do that. I know what that brings. I know the issue it brings. I know it's also not protecting my man. I know God doesn't like it. I know it causes men to lust after me. I know it could cause my man to fall into sexual Im- 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 immorality or temptation before we get married. I know it could cause so many things, right? I know it can pull on his lust and make him lusty. But I also need to protect him because I love him. I also need to honor my father. Right. I also need to honor my father with my body and who I am as a woman. And as a man, he got to do the same thing. She understands the dynamic of who she's supposed to be in Christ. Right. Rather than me just choosing a woman. That's what happens when you got discernment. That's what happens when you got spiritual maturity. I know which woman to choose and which woman not to choose. When you read the Bible, you can figure these things out. Right. When you read the Bible, you can see King Xerxes getting rid of Vashti. And then God lining up a bunch of women in front of him, including Esther, and he choosing the woman he want to be with and is actually a godly woman because he chose the wrong woman before. Right. You can actually see this now. You understand? You can see certain things because now you're stronger. Right. God says this. So if somebody else says the opposite, I understand all of that is a lie now. You can't tell me I'm this because God is okay with it. You can't tell me that you got to be selfish to people. You can't tell me that I, that, 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 that I can't correct myself and try to be kind to others. You can't tell me that I'm supposed to put myself first. That's foolishness to be like, Rudy, you should put yourself first. You don't deserve that. That's... That's not Christ. I actually don't deserve. I actually, you feel me? I'm worth, but I don't deserve. Christ told me to to love people, right? He told me to to think of others. So that's what I got to do. But I also am wise enough to understand the type of woman I could choose. I need to choose to be with, right? I understand what a wife is. And I think that's the thing too, y'all. We need discernment to understand what a wife is. We need discernment to understand what a husband is. Right? Ladies, don't just be thinking, oh, he's a husband because he makes 100K. And if you consistently keep your mind on that, I guarantee God will give you a man who keep, who makes 100K. And I don't mean that in a good way. Your mind can't be on that. I'm really being very honest with you because I know how my God is. 
And he will literally let you have what you want. If you get what I'm saying. He will let you have what you want. And he will allow it to hurt you. And in hopes to change you and to bring you back. Fellas, you can't be out here just choosing a woman just because of how she looks. And her booty is big. and Because you never had a woman that was so beautiful. And, and man, man, stop that nonsense. Stop choosing women off of that. Because when they get old, as people forget, bro, she not going to look like how she look. She not going to sound how she sound. She not going to be able to do all of that, bro. You forget how these 80-year-old women look. You think your woman going to be looking like this for the rest of her life? That's dead. Ladies, y'all going to get old and wrinkled. You better change your heart. <laughs> you feel me? He going to get old and wrinkled too. All of y'all. We all going to get old and wrinkled. You ain't going to be a supermodel when you 80. That's a fact. You feel me? That's, hey. Or you're going to be a, a grandma supermodel. That's about it. But you're not going to look like your youth. That's a fact. So we got to choose better, y'all. And ladies, I'm going to go back to y'all. Y'all got to choose better. You cannot choose a man based off of his, based off of how you feel, ladies. I'm trying to tell you, you cannot. Because if you choose a man based off of how you feel, you don't know his capacity. You want a man who understands you, but you can't choose him based off of how he, how you feel. Right? Let me repeat that. Just because you, he makes me feel good, that doesn't mean that this man, if you needed his help, if you're pregnant and you feel bad and you call him, right? Let's say he had work in the middle of the night that he just going up and leave for you. That does not tell that. But you want to know that you with a man who going up and leave, who going to jump up. For you, he will sacrifice because he loves you. For your children, how you going to realize that? Just because you feel good. Just because he opened a car door. Just because you on the phone with him. Right? Just because he, 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 he said, God told me in two days. How you going to figure that out? How you going to see the fruit of the spirit? Just because he make you feel good. Come on, man. God love you to death and God don't just make you feel good. The devil makes you feel good. Let me repeat that. The devil will say, yes, you can have this. Yeah, why not? Go ahead. Be you, baby. I mean, if that's what you want to do, it. I mean, do what you want, baby. I mean, YOLO. YOLO. Let's have fun. I'm a, I want to make you happy. That's the devil. That's the devil. And that's a nice guy. Y'all guys need to stop it. <laughs> right? I'm being dead serious for real. I know a lot of people don't be wanting to hear what I got to say sometimes. I say test it though. Go back to the Bible and test what I'm saying. Test everything I'm saying. Don't listen to me. Go back. Y'all might not like my approach, man. You feel me? Facts. JV. Y'all might not like my approach, man. But that's okay, man. I love y'all, man. I know a lot of y'all love, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know I care a lot, right? But some people who come in here, they may not know me, so you know I gotta say it. But um, fellas, man, we gotta we gotta we gotta choose women, man. We you know what I mean? Just cause her booty big don't mean nothing. Let that girl disrespect me, bro. Let her disrespect me, bro. <laughs> Yo, so they gonna be scared to disrespect dudes, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Don't let yo, don't let nobody play y'all for real. The devil will try to play you. You feel what I'm saying? That does not mean that you cannot be caring. That yes, you be caring. You be loving. But you gotta be on point. You feel me? You gotta be spiritually on point. This is why God came. Right? This is why Jesus came. He came to give us the truth. So when the enemy tries us. We already know we're, we're strategic. Like we're walk, we're not walking in blinded, right? He gonna try to test us, but we already know what's up, right? This is why Jesus got tested after the forty days and forty nights, right? Obviously, he was he was showing what was gonna happen, right? And all, obviously, the devil came to him when he was vulnerable, right? You fasting for forty days and forty nights, you weak now. So because you weak, I'm gonna try to test you. With the thing that you might be wanting the most. The thing that makes you feel good. You know, you know when you ain't had sex 
in a year. You know, when you've been changing your life, you know, when you ain't been getting bodies no more, you know, when you over here trying to be kind to people, you know, right? When you go into church now, you know, when you start changing your life, you're not in the club no more. You're not in the streets no more. You're not drinking no more. You're not smoking no more. You're not telling lies no more, right? The devil pull up like, oh, what's up? That's how the devil he pull up with like, yo, what up? What up? You remember? I'm just being funny, right? That's how he acting. But he really going to test you with the thing, right? 40 days and 40 nights, you've been on your, you know what I'm saying, doing your thing. And he like, you know, a little shorty come through and she like, yo, what's up? She like, I, I read the Bible. I go to church. I was in Bible study last week. Next thing you know, she next to you touching your leg, bro. Next thing you know, she giving you, hey, I'm telling y'all what happened to me. <laughs> next thing you know, she hugging you, bro. I don't know if y'all heard my story. Next thing you know, she hugging you. And got her leg going up the middle of your legs, bro. That's what happened to me. Next thing you know, sh well, this this happened when I was like getting closer to God. Now I understand this ain't the thing to do, right? Because I started getting closer in 2013. This happened in 2016, right? Next thing you know, I'm trying to chill with shorty and talk about things and help. And she trying to, you know, she trying to do you know. This bro, you know what I mean? You weak. I mean, you you you've been holding it down for a while, and the enemy and Shorty had like different color eyes and all. My one of my weaknesses are eyes, right? I, I love a woman's eyes. So look what he used against me. This girl had different color eyes. Beautiful. I was weak. You know what I'm saying? You can't let that happen, bro. You can't let it happen, bro. But that was what? 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. That was seven years ago. That was seven years ago. You know what I'm saying? Ladies, ladies, you can't let, let me tell you how the enemy going to use you. Let me tell you how you are easy target, ladies. I'm going to tell y'all how you are an easy target. Matter of fact, I want y'all to know that the devil think y'all are easy target anyway. Let me repeat this. This is why y'all need to. And y'all probably over there getting offended. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is she talking about? Anybody get offended in these comments, you getting clipped. <laughs> y'all need to listen. You feel me? And that means I'll remove you. But no, for real. I really want y'all to understand, ladies. The enemy will use you. Right? And you are an easy target. For, you're, ladies, you're actually an easier target for the devil than men. Let me repeat that. Ladies... You are a easier target. And somebody might lie. No, that's not true. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. And look at the world. I can read the Bible and look at the world and see the same thing happening. That happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. All you got to do is look in. Oh, you. Yo. Look, ladies, you are an easy target. Rudy, how do you know this? Yes, exactly, Amy. Because Eve fell first. The devil couldn't get Adam. He got her. How did he get her? Off of her emotions. How did he? From her emotions. How? From what he said to her. Let me tell you, ladies, this is why you got to be on point. And this is why you need a man to help you. Excuse me. This is why you need Amen to help you. And let me repeat this again so, you're, so that y'all can understand. And this is why God wants you to need us and needs you to need us. It was Eve that the enemy went to first. He could have went to Adam, but he did not because he could not get Adam. But he could get Eve, though. He got Eve. Right? Off of her emotion. And then he got Adam, who he goes to first. He went to her first. Now look at the world. And y'all might get mad, but I really want you to listen to me, please. Because if you don't listen to what I am saying right now, you won't be strong in this area. The reason why I'm telling you this is so that you can be self-aware of this. 
You need a man to help you. God needs us to need each other for different reasons. Eve was a Eve was persuaded first. Adam was not persuaded first. If Adam would have corrected her or redirected her, she would have been able, right? Because he didn't come after him. He went after her. So that proves that the enemy can't just persuade men that easily, right? In a whole lot of ways. But he can persuade men through women because it's shown. Now, when you look at the world, who is the number one consumer? Again, I don't want y'all to say, I don't want y'all to think nothing bad. I just want you to be aware. Who is the number one consumer? Exactly. Don't you see the world pulling on women? An example of the tree is the world. An example of the devil, devil lying to us is the world lying and us being persuaded. Ladies, a lot of times you are persuaded easier. How? Just look at how men look at the look at everything that happens with men and women. Now I want y'all to understand this. And people might argue it. Please listen and try to ask yourself these questions. Tell me if I'm wrong or not. After listening, not how you feel. Tell me if I'm wrong or not. Please don't listen with your emotion. Look at the truth. Because if I was lying, then psychologists and researchers would not set up ways of how to attack attack women when it comes to buying stuff. Women are persuaded first. And women are persuaded by words. How do I know? Commercials, words. How do I know? Signs when you walk past a store and it says sell on it. Who goes in that store first? How do I know this? Who's in the store longer? How do I know this? Who has the most clothes in a store? Yes, even colors. All of these things, because if you study the mind and you study um, biology and all of this, even... Um, men and women have like a something in our eyes where we're more attracted to certain colors. Women are attracted to colorful colors and brighter colors. Men are more attracted to regular colors, black, brown. Women are attracted to pink and purple. And literally as a child, it shows this. So because psychologists and scientists study this and know this, what do they tell businesses? Why do you think businesses have psychologists that work for them? It helps the businesses. How do I attract? How do I market? We know the number one consumer is who? So we're going to promote to who? Right? So I want y'all to understand this is literally what's in the Bible. So when you have things or people saying stuff, right? So if I say something, a dude could be lying to you. What's his name? What's this dude's name? What's that guy's name? Uh, Derek Jackson. Even him. Listen to what he was saying. Lord, forgive me. I'm not trying to say nothing bad about him because I really got I really got grace and mercy for him, especially after I heard him on the, um, the Wifey podcast or whatever. But even him, when he was saying things, right, y'all was pulled by the nonsense he was saying. And he was lying. You understand? I want you to understand what happens. And this is why. Y'all got to be on your P's and Q's. Fellas, you are persuaded by a woman's body. I am persuaded <laughs> by a woman's body. You feel what I'm saying? It's, hey, it's a fact. We are. And this is where we got to be strong. You know what I'm saying? I can't even lie. This is where I need to be strong. I can't. You know what I mean? We got to be on it, y'all. For real. So. We got to understand, we got to understand that we need to have, that we need to have discernment, y'all, that we need to understand people's capacities before choosing someone. Oh, yeah. And whoever's in here, please follow me, y'all, because y'all know I make multiple lives a week, Bible studies, all of that. So please follow me. Continue to like it up. I forget to say that stuff. Follow me on um YouTube, too, please. But, um yeah, we got to be careful with who we choose, right? And we need discernment. How do we discern? Well, that's a great question. 
Kaylin. You gotta follow me, Kaylin. <laughs> but um, the way that you discern, I'm gonna tell you, you you can't actually have discernment without self awareness. So here's something. Matter of fact, I'm glad you asked that question. Here's something that I realized, and this is how I got more discernment. For one, let me tell you, that's that's like. That's one of my main gifts. Discernment is one of my main gifts, right? This is the reason why I talk about this all the time, a lot, right? But you really can't... Discernment comes from wisdom, y'all. Discernment comes from wisdom. So you can't just up and have discernment. Let me repeat that. You can try to discern, but the only way that you can discern is through wisdom. That's a fact. Y'all feel me? So you actually have to go through something in order to... For something to be revealed. Like you can't see without going through something for you to see. You get it? Does that make sense? Because I could talk to you till, you till I'm blue in the face. And you won't understand a word that I am saying. Because you don't got the discernment or the wisdom or the self-awareness or the spiritual maturity or the emotional intelligence to understand what I'm saying. So therefore you will be low in discernment, and the enemy will continue to use you. And this is why God allows these situations that we go through, y'all. This is why you go through something and it hurts. So what I learned was, right, I learned this. And I know God did this to me on purpose when I asked. I learned because the Bible says, ask and it will be given, right? Seek and you will find, knock. And the door will be open, right? The Bible says do not lean on your own understanding. The Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. The Bible says to ask and keep on asking. The Bible says that God will give to you what you ask, right? So what did I do? Lord, bless me with discernment. Lord, give me discernment. God, give me insight. God, Help me to see what's hard for me to see. So I'm a, what I'm saying right now, please make sure that y'all say this in a prayer, y'all. I need y'all to understand. Ask God to give you discernment. If that ain't the, 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 one of the best things you can ask God, I'm trying to tell you that's one of the best things you can ask God. But I want y'all to be aware of what's going to happen, though. God is not a genie. Let me repeat that. He is not a genie, so he's not just about to bing, and you got discernment, Right? So, so be aware, if you a soldier in Christ, if you's a warrior, if you really about this life, understand God will give you what you ask, but you got to receive what he gives you. So, ask God, Lord God, give me discernment, God, help me to see what's hard for me to see. Open my eyes, God, I can't see this. Help me to see this thing because I keep doing the wrong thing. I keep choosing the wrong person. I keep running into arguments with this person. I keep feeling this way about this person. Lord God, why can't I let go of this? Why do I keep getting upset? Why does this person affect me so much? Why I can't let go of this person? Give me discernment. Why can't I understand that they are not for me? Why can't I understand that I'm not ready. Why can't I understand these things? Because you can't see. That's why you're blind to the lies. You're blind by the sex. You're blind by your emotion. And you can't hear because of how you feel. This is why the Bible and people say, well, well, feel, feel, feel. Well, what you think flesh is? What you think the flesh is? What you think flesh is? You know what I'm saying? You blind because of your flesh. Your flesh is what you feel. But you don't know the truth of why you're feeling this. The flesh is what you want. That causes you to feel good. But you can't see that the thing that's causing you to feel good is actually bad. You can't see that this person over here ignoring you every single day really don't care about you. You can't see that this person who's not telling you the truth for a day, they don't got your best interests. You can't see. Here's another one. You can't see that when people lie, 
that it comes from fear. That's a hard one. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Oh, God. Um, yeah. So it's our flesh, y'all. You feel me? We got to have discernment, man. So you can discern something. But you got to understand something like I could teach you. I could show y'all how to discern. You feel what I'm saying? I can help you. Hold on. All right, I'm back, y'all. So I could help y'all discern certain things, right? But but in order to do that, you gotta put how you feel to the side, y'all. Like you can't, you cannot discern anything with your emotion front and center. You feel me? You cannot discern anything with your emotion front and center. Can y'all hear me? Y'all get me? So, so see, see, there's another thing right there. You say they lied to you, right? So with discernment, you can recognize if someone lies or not. And a lot of in a lot of ways you can figure these things out. But see, this is why God says to test the spirit, y'all. You willing to test the spirit? Some of us, man, we be over here like, why do you got to test everything? And, and a lot of us just believe everything somebody say. You can't get, you cannot have this. You won't use discernment if you believe everything that somebody says. You will not have discernment if you do not test the spirit. You literally got to be able to see. Feel what I mean? Like someone who discerns is a seer. They can see things. They can recognize. It's like... It's like seeing through a brick wall that's right in front of you. Like I could tell this brick wall is going to fall in a year by looking at the brick wall. But other people can't tell that brick wall going to fall. But I can. That means I have discernment about this thing. Right. Example. Here's an example. Here's an example. So I, 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 I talked about this on my live before. One of my friends was talking to this guy. Right. She was talking to this guy and she was liking this guy and the dude kept she would be like, you know, she wanted to see him or whatever. She hadn't seen him. She wanted to see him. And he would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could see each other. Right. We, I'm, I'm with it. We could do this next week at this time. Boom, boom, boom. And then when it got to that day. He either didn't respond or he. um was like, man, I can't do it. And he did that like four or five times. You know, after two times, I would start to question, right? But she still has some type of hope, like, oh, he's a godly man. He's always talking about God. Y'all know me. I don't care what he talking about. The devil talk about God. Right? I don't care what he's talking about. You don't see God by what they talk about. You see God by how they are. Right? And you see God through revelation. Right? If you can clearly see that God's truth is being revealed in a lot of ways. If this person sounds like how God is. Right? They can recognize certain things about him. Like give you hidden truths that's hard to see. Spiritual truth. You, you know what I mean? And they got a real passion and they back it up and they try and they consistently think of God. That's God. It ain't going to church on Sunday. It ain't just t talking about God. And then just me saying I'm going to abstain from sex. That does not just mean that I follow God. So I'm telling her because I'm asking these questions because what's funny as she's telling me this, I'm discerning this guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, she telling me this. I'm like, right, uh-huh. She like, yeah. I'm like, all right, so how many times he did this? She like five, like five times he did it this time, boom, 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 boom. And then he did it that same day, right? And 
I'm like, I'm like, this dude not keeping his word, bro. He not keeping his word. And he just did this. I'm like, I'm trying to let her know, like, for one, that's not godly. Two, you can clearly see that he doesn't have the capacity, y'all, to be in a relationship. He does not have the capacity. And this is where you have discernment because you got to be able to see further than what you see. That's what having discernment is, right? I know how the devil is going to try to trick me and what he's going to try to do by what's happening right now. And I know what could happen later. You know what I'm saying? So I got discernment. So you should be able to see what is actually going to happen by what's happening now. But when you let your emotions get involved and you want what you want, and that's front and center. You cannot see a thing. You are blinded. You understand? So right there, you can see that he's not, for one, he's not that godly. I don't care if you're talking about God, bro. You can't keep your word off the smallest thing, bro. I'm going to need you to get back to your to the basics, homie. I'm saying I need you to practice this, bro. You over here trying to read a Bible and, and teach it, but I need you to actually try to walk. At least try to keep your, keep what you said. At least if you say you're going to be somewhere, try to do that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the least. That's like, yo, that, exactly. That's like a basic. You think of, well, basic is like going to church on Sunday. But spiritually, that's like something basic. Just keeping your word. Like, but I know how hard that is, right? You know what I'm saying? In a lot of ways to people. Um, but having discernment tells you. Where this person is. So this person can't keep their word. This person. Um, every time this happens. This person does that. Okay. I can clearly see. They're not that godly. Two. I can clearly see. That they are having a hard time with this. This tells me. That we're going to have a hard time with this in a relationship. And it's going to be enhanced. Right. Because of emotion. It's going to be enhanced. So. I probably don't need to move forward discernment and that shows you that he don't he's not that close right his spirit ain't that strong he's not that spiritually mature right he don't got morals he don't got principles and standards that he stand on like that he's not standing which means integrity right because integrity means you don't move off of your morals your principles your standards all of that you stand on this and people can see it so that integrity is falling off. You know what I mean? He, that integrity is not there. That shows you discernment. Right? Example. Uh, another example. A girl. When. Um, here's an example. So Rudy. Me. Uh, I'm like my girl can't be over here wearing booty shorts and a booty out. And she got to be. She got to be considerate when she. You know what? How she dressed and all of that. But if I meet a girl. And like I said. This is. This is. Like, I could teach you, but it's hard because, and I'm going to come back to that with, with her dressing, but this, this, like this, what I'm saying would be hard because now you got the, the world in your mind, in your ear. You see how hard that is? When you have discernment, it's hard to have that because you got the world in your ear. You got your family in your ears. You got your friend in your ears. You got the people who don't follow God like that in your ears. Now you watching... YouTube, you watching TikTok, you looking all at all this nonsense is in your mind. It makes it hard for you to have discernment. So, example, if I got a girl or or it's a girl that, you know, like I said, she gotta be modest, like she gotta be considerate about how she dressing on to be with me. Right? So if I meet a girl and I see, you know what I'm saying, like I woke up, she tell me, or I could see, well not see, I'm not gonna say I can see this, but I could clearly see that this girl is half naked, <laughs> right? Or she is away with her dressing that I don't like. Her, she got mad cleavage out, right? She, she, her booty's out or whatever. Skirt mad short. This doesn't mean she's a bad person. Doesn't mean that she doesn't have a relationship with God, but it does mean that she's not. Th there yet she's not that spiritually mature yet because you would understand those things as well right 
Um, what else? And that also means that she's not where I need her to be as a wife. Right? Just off of that. Because I'm, I can't marry that type of woman. So, but if the world is like, Rudy, that's wrong. You should let her do that. And boom, boom, boom. And, da, 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 da. and I keep letting that drown in me, right? Or drown me out. Or drown out, you know, my standards and all of that. Then I'm going to fall. And then I'm going to choose a woman that I think. Um, she, that doesn't mean that she won't change. But I ain't got hope in her changing, <laughs> right? She got to be however she want to be. That's how she want to be. She do her thing, right? That's her thing. Ain't got nothing to do with me. But... To me, that's not how a godly wife dresses, right? You protect your family spiritually by how you are, what you do, what you wear, where you at, what you say. You, you're a full representation of your family and of God, right? So to me, my discernment would be she's not there yet. Okay, she in her Bible. I see you doing your thing. She at church. Yeah, but, but her body out, bro. You feel me? Like like she at the club twerking it up, but pulling pulling down her skirt. She got to keep pulling it down. Nah, shorty, you got to do all that. You know what I'm saying? Let's just trans, you know, transform. You know what I mean, do a little transformation like like you don't got to be like this baby girl. You don't got to like we don't we don't we don't lead. We don't got to lead like that. Right? So if I understand that already before I get to her, when I see it, my discernment tells me she's not like this yet. She's not she's not there yet. So therefore, if I choose her, there's going to be an issue down the line because she's not doing it on her own because I got to choose a woman that's already there on her, by herself. Like, I'm not about to be telling you like, yo, I mean, now, if it came down to it and you're modest, I I could be someone that help you like, yo, babe, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to point it out. I don't care what nobody said. I don't get married or be with somebody and not going to say nothing. I do be bugging out here. You so secure, bro. Shoot, if my woman fell away, you need to say something, man. You feel me? I respect you. I love you. I represent you. Say something to me. You feel me? Say something. If 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 how I'm dressing bothers you, and you feel like it's tempting in some way towards you and other women in our relationship with God, you need to say something to me. I would definitely appreciate that. And I would know that you care and you love and you want to protect this relationship. I'm not no sucker God. Like, oh my God, you're insecure. I should do whatever I want to do. That's immaturity. That's another thing. So if there's a woman that says, you're controlling and, and I should do this and there's nothing wrong with this. I know that she's not mature enough, right? Because the very same thing you say to me in that way, you're actually, you're not really rebelling against me though. You're really rebelling against God. That's a fact. You're really rebelling against God. And this is not a religious thing. This is literally a spiritual protection thing, right? This also, because you got to protect your man too. You, this is how you love him too. Men are naturally protective, right? So, my discernment tells me that is the wrong choice because now I'm going to be fighting with her. Like, I'm trying to change her. No, she's not there yet. This tells me she's not there yet. But there's another woman that is there. You get what I'm saying? That I don't got to fight with her. I don't got to do all of this stuff with. There's another woman that that I can communicate with because the other girl, she might be like, if I communicate how I feel, oh, my God. Why are you acting like there's something wrong with you? That's your demons. You trying to bring these demons over here. And I didn't mean that. And that was not my, um, uh, uh, that wasn't my intentions. And I don't know why you feel that way. And I'm like, yo, babe, all I just said was, dang, I, I just said what you doing. <laughs> I just said, can I get a hug? I just said, yo, I really didn't like when you did that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. And she's, but see, another woman is going to be like, another woman is going to be like, babe, you know what? I appreciate that. And a matter of fact, I, I thank you for communicating that. And I never want you to feel like I'm disrespecting you at all. I want you to know that I love you and I didn't mean that. Right. And I know that might have been hard for you to see, but, you know, uh, I did do that. And I'm going to take ownership of that. And I want you to know that I love you. Like, what is, what would make you feel respected more? 
boom, that is a very mature woman. That's a spiritually mature woman. That's a emotional, emotionally mature woman. You feel what I'm saying? That is a selfless woman. That is a self-aware woman. Because in order to do that, she got to put her emotions to the side. And a woman who is spiritually mature and God can do that. So I know there's one woman that's like this, right? Which tells me that's immature. But then I know there's another woman that understands and wants to understand, even if she don't fully understand. That is a mature woman. I have discernment because I know there's two different ones. I know you have to be on one level to be on either one of these. You got to be on some level to be on. So I know the one who doesn't understand what I'm saying, she's not there. She's here. Her level of understanding is low. The other one, her level of understanding is high. That's discernment. But see, before I didn't have discernment because I didn't realize. I'm just thinking, you the girl I want. And I want to be with you. And you need to be this way. Because you the girl I chose. And if you keep acting like this over time, I'm not going to marry your behind. I'm over here rhyming. Bars. <laughs> Bars, yo. But... For real though, like I understand that now. So you got to go through certain things, y'all, to have discernment. Like discernment isn't really something that you could just specifically teach. But I mean, it can be taught, but but it's very hard because it comes with experience. You got to have wisdom and you got to have knowledge to even have discernment. And this is why I say in your prayers, ask God for discernment. Ask God for discernment. Also, so his I could flip that whole thing too. So what I just said about her not understanding, right? I can also have discernment as well in a different way. So let's say she already my girl and she acting that way, right? Or whatever, whatever. I can have discernment to know this is what God taught me too, right? And everything that I learned. I can have discernment. I can have discernment where I could be like, okay, she's not whatever, whatever. Like, she's not there yet, but I wonder why she's not there, right? So now I know something had to happen for her to be this way. Or maybe she's responding or reacting a way, right? We got to, this is where God tells you to have understanding and um, to think of others, right? And to uh, be considerate and Put your emotions to the side because if you can do these things, right, then you'll you'll realize that that person isn't controlling. That person ain't just waking up trying to control you. It's something else. That person ain't waking up being mad at you. You feel what I'm saying? You over here labeling it like this and like that. Maybe it's your behind that's like that. You blind and you deaf, right? That's a fact because like I said, I was, but... Having discernment helps you to recognize that somebody might be going through something as well and they can't even recognize it. They don't understand it. This is what happens when you have a soft heart, right? When you ask God to soften your heart, now you can see things with them. And this is where you got to exercise patience. This is where you got to exercise empathy, sympathy, right? Compassion, understanding. You feel me? So now you got discernment to understand just because somebody's acting in a way doesn't actually mean that they are this you feel me or it doesn't actually mean that they are this thing that you think they are because you feel this way y'all feel what i'm saying you you literally have to get discernment and the only way to get discernment is for god to reveal the truth to you and to ask him lord give me discernment lord and a lot of times you're gonna get discernment from hard situations y'all from bad situations y'all from from painful situations, y'all. You ask God, and then you will go through a situation because God ain't a genie. He going to teach you through it. Watch. Be over here asking God, God, I don't want to argue anymore. Can you please stop us from arguing? And next thing you know, right after, you in an argument right after that prayer. And now you mad because, well, how do I get in this argument? Because God said, for one, it was you who caused the argument. You asking not to argue because you afraid of confrontation. And people who are afraid of confrontation actually cause arguments 
And when you are afraid of confrontation and conflict, hold on, y'all, hold on. You, you actually cause the confrontation. You actually cause the confrontation and conflict. So we got to make sure that, you know, that we're aware of these things, y'all. But um, I'm done with this. My mind everywhere right now. I done got mad texts, man. I'm about to get off here in a second because I got to handle some things. Y'all can hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. But yeah, y'all, um, make sure you ask God for discernment. Think about people's capacity, y'all. Understand when people react the way that tells you their capacity of where they are. You can tell um, a lot of things by a lot of things, man. Uh, I wish I could really break a lot of this stuff down, but it's very hard to understand, like extremely hard to understand. So you got to ask God to reveal, you know, the truth, help you to see things that's hard to see, help you to understand things. Ask God to help you to put your emotions to the side. That needs to be a prayer. Lord, give me discernment, give me insight, help me to understand Help me to put my emotions to the side, Lord. I want to really see what you need me to see. I really want to be less offensive. I really want to be able to allow people to communicate with me. I really want to not go back and forth and argue with people. I really want to not be so emotional with certain things. Lord, help me with this. You need to ask that in your prayer. You feel me? Like literally ask. God, give me insight. Bless me with your understanding. Deliver me from my own fleshy understanding, worldly understanding, and give me your understanding, right? These need to be prayers. Give me discernment. Give me revelation. Reveal your secrets to me. Reveal your treasure to me. Help me to see what you see. Place your eyes in my eyes. Place your words on my lips and my ears. You know what I'm saying? You got to ask these questions, man. Lord, do this for me. That need to be in your prayers. And I'm saying this because these are the questions that I, this is what I ask. God, can you please give me discernment? Can you please help me to see what's affecting me? Can you please allow me to, to do this thing? You got to look, and, and to be honest, you got to look at yourself to even say these things, y'all. Let me tell you another way. Let me I'm going I'm to reveal something to y'all. Here, here's, here's something that I can reveal to y'all real quick before I get off. God will never give you these things if you do not look at yourself. Let me repeat that. God will never give you this if you consistently blame other people and you do not look at yourself. If you do not say, I did something wrong, God will not give you discernment. If you do not say, I did something to this person. So if you consistently say, it was them, God will not allow you to see a thing. How do I know this? How did God treat the people? How did Jesus treat the people who said, who didn't say that they was a sinner? In order to say I am a sinner, I have to look at myself. Those who didn't say or didn't claim that they were sick. Jesus said, I came for the sick. Those who didn't claim to be sick did not know who he was. Did not. They was not able to see who he was. That means they didn't have discernment to see. They could have, but they didn't look at themselves. If you don't look at yourself, if you be out here saying it was them, it was him, it was her. God going to allow you to keep making that mistake. You will never get discernment from him. That is a fact. He says he will keep your eyes closed because you do not, because you want to be selfish 
and you don't want to take accountability or responsibility, God will not give you discernment. You can't have it because it's his. You can't have it. You will not get it. You will walk blindly. You will consistently keep choosing the same person. You will consistently keep going through the same things because you did not tell God, God, I'm doing something wrong here. Please help me with this. Lord, forgive me for what I did. Forgive me, Lord. First, you probably need to ask God what you did. Because <laughs> if you can't see it, you got to, Lord, please show me if I did something. Guarantee. Your eyes going to start to open. I guarantee you going to start to get discernment. Look at Paul. <laughs> you got to do is look at Paul. You know what I'm saying? Look at Paul, man. For real. I'm trying to tell you, you want discernment, then you got to be selfless. You got to look at yourself. Or else, God ain't going to give it to you, man. You're going to be walking around here mad and sad, and it's going to be over for you because you won't never own up to nothing. God going to be like, you know, that's what you wanted to do. You want to be your own God? You want to live your own life and do what you want? Uh-huh. Oh. But um, I'm about to get off here, y'all. I got to handle some things. All right. If y'all not following me, please follow me. Um, Y'all know I go live all the time. And subscribe to my YouTube. If y'all miss this, I'm going to start putting my lives up on YouTube. My TikTok lives going to start going up on YouTube. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night. I got to handle some things. I love y'all. Make sure y'all read your Bible. Make sure y'all read your Bible. Read a scripture, two scriptures. Read a story. Read a chapter, whatever. Make sure y'all read your Bible before y'all go to sleep. All right? Night, y'all.